So, uh, hi, I'm Dark9. Um, all y'all are wonderful, this game is wonderful, and I am more than privileged to be able to do this run for you. For a great cause. Uh, I've got Third Wall and Bola up here, and you can take it away. How's hey, it going? What's up, everyone? Yeah, so we've got Dark9 running Storks, Marcel's first Kaito hack. About three years old now, but still a really, really great hack. This game has aged very well. Very well for three years ago. Yeah, for sure. Even though three years is like 15 years in Kaizo years. <laughs> uh, I remember saying this a long time ago and just being in awe of how much it accomplished and how pretty it looked, how much it flowed. Uh, anyway, I'm good to go basically whenever. Someone want to count me down? Well, let's just, do you want one of us? Yeah, go for it. All right. I'm uh, good either way. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Yeah, so and the game definitely doesn't start off easy. No, I, I would say the first jump of Storks is one of the harder jumps in the whole game. Very much agree with that. <laughs> I spent a lot of time just resetting at this first jump. And that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> this jump, though. The rest of the level is not too bad uh, once you know what to do. But that there first is... jump is a, uh, it's pretty much a, you know, you must be this morsel to ride sort of thing. There's one speed strat there where he actually skips the cycle on the uh, piranha plant and goes on the first cycle. Then the rest of the level is just a memory test, something that you'll see a lot of in morsel hacks. Pretty solid start. Yeah. Second five, second try, first jump, and everything else went great. Seventeen. Second level. So this level is kind of infamous because right before the midway, it has this obstacle <laughs> where you slide under some munchers on the slope, which has now <laughs> spawned its own genre of game. You you could call it a slope muncher, even. You definitely could. So fun fact: this is not the original slope muncher. Uh, Kaizo 3 has the original Slope Muncher in the second level. I want to say this is the second, though. <laughs> yes, Marathon, it is a super Slope Muncher. <laughs> Easy through it, though. So here, there, I spawned the, uh, the Spiny on the ceiling, and the goal is to make it so that I don't have to Right, I don't make it fall before I want it to. I still really love the sound the spines make when they fall oh. off the ceiling. They're like a little whistle. Nice fast strat right at the end. Oof. Close. That's okay. Nobody Very easy to deaths. take deaths in a lot of places in this game. Super hard game. I do like that that whistle. <laughs> the dive bomb. There we go. Nice. Ah. Yeah, so third of all I was saying the game is really hard, and in my opinion, this next level is like the first really, really hard level. Like level three is really a notch above the first two. Yeah, this is definitely the first time I really felt a lot of pain in this hack, the first time I played it. Uh, and it's mostly because it's a vertical level, and vertical level means your spawns are going to be all kinds of screwed up. Yeah, and, and the buzzy beetles are like sometimes tricky to jump on, because like you think you're on top, but you'll like really hit the, their heads and still die to them. A little bit of an easy strat right here. Yeah, if you jump right on that beetle, uh, that spike falls very, very quickly and kills you most of the time. And right here is where the spawn issues start. <laughs> so you have to wait on that first gray platform just a second and then go as fast as you can on the other two. Just so you can make that Potobo spawn at the right time. This is BK's favorite room in the hack. Uh, Typical morsel trope of the tunnel of, <laughs> tunnel of... all enemies. <laughs> Yeah, 
you guys okay if I get a couple donations in? Absolutely. We've got forty dollars and forty-four cents from Glitter Biscuits with no message, and we have twenty dollars from Endless Revolt saying you may learn it. If in a slide and catch the falling man, I may carry him in the slide. <laughs> Morsel's message boxes in this game are S tier. Uh, so I believe good. that one's actually a shout out to Luigi's Adventure, which inspired this game. Yeah, I really wish I could uh, show off a lot of the message boxes. I might show off one of them. My favorite one. Uh, so this water level is probably one of the... Uh, more laid back levels in the hack but there's some pipes in the second half that if you try to uh, swim too quickly out of will kill your swim up and will just knock you down into the ocean so you got to be really careful coming out of the pipes but for the most part this is just a memory test such a scary tunnel right there this also oh, inspired a uh, level in invictus with all the fast swimming rip van fish this entire hacks inspired uh, Invictus in a lot of ways. I like so, in many ways this entire hack was like kind of created in some sense its own like Kaizo genre. Nice, you didn't get it. piped. I did not. <laughs> it is the worst time loss in this entire game. I hate it. It's so fr it's so frustrating. <laughs> it happens so, to me all the time still. <laughs> so what can happen is as you come out of that pipe, uh, if you don't swim correctly or swim too early, uh, it'll just push you down into the urchin, and there's just nothing you can do about it. People who don't speedrun this game, this is generally their favorite level. Uh, it's really fast-paced and really fun. It's got some really tight jumps in it, though. So you yeah, see him cool. jumping a few times there. He's just buffering uh, so he knows exactly when to jump on that thwomp again. I just want to add your comment type jumps. I think the second half is like really hard. To oh my god. So this first series of jumps in the second half is probably the tightest jumps in the level. And then at the end, it's just really hard fireball jump. Which again is slightly spawn dependent. So you have to be really careful with the jumps leading up to it so you actually spawn the potabo at the right time at the end. Yeah. Oh. Oof. That was bad enough. That's okay. This is one of the levels that I still kind of lose time on here and there. Me too. It's just it's just really hard to execute this level. It just comes down to that. Oh. Yep. Like that jump in particular. Getting onto that uh, little carry platform is what always gets me. I mean, you don't like just jump into the first ball. You kind of have to stall a bit when you first carry it. Like, otherwise you jump too early and you won't reach the ball. There's, a lot, of, the there's a lot of managing your, your jump height in this level that is hard to see. Like, there's a lot of managing slow fall versus fast fall. Like, yeah, that potabo at the end. Yeah, that's a big yeah. jump. It's rough. What's nice about Storks is that a lot of the levels kind of go back and forth in difficulty. So like after this, we have levels that aren't that hard. That one level is really hard. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was gonna, say, I was gonna say, <laughs> which which levels aren't that hard? Was it the uh, Yoshi level with the switch tunnel or uh, sticky keys? <laughs> I do think like in a bad game though, there's like a bit of a break for sticky keys. Like it, there is a bit of a break. The, the three levels after Sticky Keys are are where you learn to have fun again after you play Sticky Keys. Yeah, then, then eventually you get to some nasty ropes. And yeah, the carrot's kind of hard because if you stall too long, then you just run into the spike that's down there. Yeah, like, if you, and also, like, you can't get momentum if you wait too long to start running. There so we your go. jump height's not nice. big enough to reach anything. Nice. This and is after, one of. Oh, go ahead, Dark Knight. After that section, you're rewarded with one of the. I'm just gonna not talk. Third wall, take it away. <laughs> one of the easiest bosses in the game. Uh, which, to be fair, um, most of the bosses in this game are relatively easy, uh, with the exception of one, well, two, uh, right next to each other in the uh, the two levels before motor skills. You get two bosses that are both pretty tough. 
This is nice and chill. Oh, I did. Oh. oh, no swag. That was close. It's very close. I think I like cheated there, like clipped into. Yeah, the I know. <laughs> we always try to throw the, the uh, grab blocks onto the pink spikes just for swag. This level is so much harder than it looks. <laughs> This level looks like just a memory test, but there are some obstacles in this level that are really, really rude. I think that obstacle is another throwback to Luigi's Adventure. So coming up, there's this tunnel of switches that are really easy to double hit. And towards the late game in Luigi's Adventure, Anarchy has some similar obstacles. I, think I believe Morsel said people were complaining about the double hits. And I believe Morsel's comment was, if you aim between the switches, then you will not double hit. I mean, in fairness, that's true. It is true. He's not wrong. You can reliably not do so. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, the best thing about that is those switches reappear later in the game, and in that level, double hits are patched. <laughs> yeah, it was intentionally not patched for that level. All right, this I'm is a puzzle. Go... Uh, I've never seen anyone do this puzzle the intended way. <laughs> I, I still maintain that this is the intended way, but I know that's probably wrong. So you grab the shell. What are you going to do with the shell? <laughs> it's a puzzle. <laughs> it's, a, it's a puzzle. This, it is so easy to lose minutes just screwing up this strat, though, until like you get consistent with it. So you wait, you wait for the shell to shake, and then you jump, and then you drop it right at that dark line, and there you go. Easy, easy puzzle. I've not seen Cozy Duck's solution. Now everybody's favorite song in the game. Second favorite. So the uh, the gimmick here is as soon as you grab the key, it's stuck to Mario's hands. So that's why this level is called Sticky Keys. Mario hit shift five times. I didn't get the uh, setup that I wanted there for that skip. But... I think the jump over the Yoshi is like two or three frames, or over the the block. So there, there's a little there's a little uh, speed strat that you can do there that saves a few seconds. But I if I don't feel confident, I never go for it. I have a very obvious visual cue for whether or not I should go for it, and I did not get it. Okay, well, I'm going to go for it again. <laughs> there you go. So the end of this level is one of the obstacles that a lot of people struggle with. Uh, it's <laughs> it's a fishing boo paired with a homing boo paired with uh, on-off blocks that turn on and off in a rhythm, and you have to kind of dance around both of them and figure out how to make them move. But the thing about it is there's like a bunch of ways to go for it. Yo, nice skip way to get it uh so every runner does something slightly different and if i'm not mistaken dark nine is going to go for the fast strat which was my old strat which looks scary <laughs> we'll see if he goes for it yeah I, I would even say like this fishing boo obstacle at the end is one of the things that sticks with you the most after your first playthrough really. uh, it's certainly stuck with me it's up there with the first jump in the game There it is. <laughs> God, nice. <laughs> scary. Nice. <laughs> it's so scary every time. <laughs> Nailed it. Though. Uh, so that is the fastest strat at the end. That only Dark and I and, and myself that I know of go for that. And I don't even go for it anymore. Yeah, Third Wall taught me how to do that at GDQ last year. And then I promptly forgot how to do it, so... <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the the first in the three quote unquote break levels. Uh, I would say there's only one difficult trick in this whole level and it's the last jump, which means it's again, really easy to lose time. Uh, that's a theme in this hack. A lot of the hardest stuff is like right at the end of the level and that's why the speed runs can be super brutal. Uh, especially when you're starting out because the end of the hack is two of the hardest levels in the entire game and they're ridiculous. 
Yeah, they're two of the hardest and also two of the longest. Longest, yeah. It, it's just brutal losing time there. So yeah, normal fly is disabled for this level, so that's why you only see him spinning. Even if you were to hit B at the start, you would just spin fly. And there's like an interesting coin guide, which kind of makes sense. Blue coins always meant release, but it's a bit confusing. <laughs> it's it's especially confusing because the cape fall frame rule isn't patched. So uh, when you let go of of the jump button, there's a delay in frames that you'll actually lose height. So nice. fun fact Not the about last this. Jump. Fun fact about that last jump. Uh, I was running this for a few months before I ever knew that that block goes backwards. And I didn't realize that I was doing the uh, the speed strat there. Nice. I just straight up didn't know. Oh, get in there. <laughs> I took me so long to develop a strat to just get in that pipe right away. <laughs> it's an annoying way to lose time. Yeah, it's not a lot of time, but it, it's kind of a slap in the face. So. It is. So this is one of the auto scrollers in the hack and the strat to this level for speedrunners is mario goes off screen the level <laughs> just stay above it if you stay above it there's almost no danger for the whole thing yeah so basically like you get so high up that, the en that you're past the enemies before they even spawn with the exception of the last jump which uh i don't know if you go for a dark nine but i go for the off screen pipe entry because yeah, morsel does have the, the free pipes I'll, I'll go for it for the first time. Yeah, one try, why not? It's a marathon. <laughs> and this yeah. jump right here, this short spin jump, this is a really, yeah. that's a really tough jump. It's way tighter than it looks like, especially when you can't see the munchers. And that was a nice save. It's a really bad baseball cycle, so if you don't go for the off screen. Oh, no. Rough okay. baseballs. Very occasionally that baseball truck will spawn kind of weird and throw bad baseballs. That one was just a, uh, my up button wasn't pressed, so. That up button, man. Can I, uh, get a couple donations in while we're going back through this section? Absolutely. For sure. Uh, we have $13.69 from Rainbow Llamas that just says nice. Nice. And then we have a $50 donation from Nintendo Essay that says, good luck, Dark, you're killing it. I'll never forget how we spent all of Hack Attack last year whispering one another how special this event was for both of us and for everyone here. Thanks for being there. So happy to hear this commentary by two huge inspirations for me as well. I love you all. Aw, uh, Desi. We love you too, Desi. Yeah, I agree with the comment. Dark is definitely killing it. Yeah, this, this is That's going really well. I have been practicing this for way too long. <laughs> I've been joking that... Uh, at the end of this run, I'm just done, done running it. But I've joked many a time that I'm going to be done running Storks. <laughs> it exactly. doesn't happen. It just keeps pulling you back in, Dark Nine. Marcel has this peculiar grip on his victims. He, he really does. Back. There we go. There's the off-screen pipe. Nice. I'll never be free. Maybe someday. Come on. <laughs> Maybe someday. Thank you, everyone, for the donations. It, uh, it means a lot, and it will help a lot of people out there. So depending on who you talk to, this is either people's favorite or least favorite level. Uh, I love this level, but a lot of people say that the background makes them a little bit nauseous. <laughs> this is also the first instance of Morsel's super fast platforms, which you will see more of later. Not in this hack, in another hack. So this is also my favorite. It's actually why I. It's super that. fun. Oh my god, this level's so much fun. There's some speed strats to this. He went for it. There's a shell jump you can do there. Oh. Uh, that actually skips a cycle. Uh oh. Uh, oh, this is. Oh no, it's not. You get you get three shots at the uh, at the shell. I forgot the shell doesn't come down. Not on not under the third one. No. There's a so the P switch actually releases the shell. And when it goes off screen, it despawns and respawns. And so once the P switch is done, uh, so is the, the shell coming down. 
There's a tiny bit of jank in this level, which I'm glad we haven't seen. That red P-switch right before the really fast jump there at the end sometimes doesn't spawn. I haven't seen it happen in a while. You can also have like a funny death there if you're not careful to slow down. You can just like go so quickly to the wall that it crushes you. Also, you have to let go of the jump button there. Uh, if you re-grab it at the wrong time, you can do an accidental jump and jump right into the spikes, and I've definitely done that too. <laughs> So this is the on-offs where the double switch hit was patched. So at least at least it didn't make you aim for the switches in this. Uh, this is also Dilbert. <laughs> GG. How many boos does Storks have? It has one, two, three? Three? Four. Four boos. Uh, yeah, three Four. plus then a really yeah. powerful final boo. Yeah. Four. He counts for more than one. This is another level that splits a lot of people's opinions. I hated this level, but it's because I was playing on a bad controller. Uh, you have to have really, really accurate D-pad for this level to work properly. It does yeah, have other... really nice aesthetics, though. It does. The other day, uh, someone was uh, making fun of me for the, the amount of rubbers that I go through. This is the level that causes that. <laughs> No! And that's why. No. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's so easy just to not get the up input at the right time. And you really, on the vertical ropes especially, if you're holding up at all, you just re-grab every time you try to jump off of them, and it's really easy just to fall down. In the place where that death just happened, it always felt to me like you could be holding off and still not grab the rope. I'm convinced that sometimes it just doesn't register. Like, everywhere else, it seems fine, but just, like, there, when you hold up, sometimes it feels like you just go through it anyway. At least, at least these aren't the Hyper 6 conveyor ropes, so we can be thankful for that. Dark and Nine choosing to wait here, which was probably wise. Sometimes that top Koopa uh, is spawned in a tiny bit early, so he can be right in your way at the end if you go for the one cycle. Also, this level has ice physics, even though you're only on the ground at the checkpoint. Not sure why that is. <laughs> Reasons. Reasons. So I was I was gonna go for the fast strat on that Koopa, but only if I had one shot it. Maybe it's just lore because the next level is the ice level, which is one of my favorite levels in the run. Even though there is some stuff that can really trip you up at the end of the first half. This is something I think is really nice about the hack. Is Marcel always foreshadows the next level at the end of the previous one. So it's like you kind of walk out of ice, and then the next level starts as ice. There being no overworld also makes it a really fun speedrun because it all flows together really nice. So the P-switch and the fireball is basically required to get these coins to turn into blocks. Uh, and there's two particularly tricky ones at the end of this level. Yeah, for me, I always felt like this is one of the scarier levels in the run. It's like if you miss a fireball or slight PP slow, everything can go wrong. The P switch timer is incredibly tight too, so you gotta be really fast going up those two, and you got it first try. Nice. Yeah, like, you really can't miss a single jump there. No, no. Uh, same thing in the second half. There's a the first P switch timer is incredibly tight, so you gotta really optimize your movement. And like sometimes, this fireball can miss the switch if you shoot it incorrectly. That's just, scary. Like, bounce right over it. And... I thought about trying to save that, but if I didn't, then it would have been a, uh, a huge time loss, so I just took the death there. Sometimes you just gotta take those deaths, honestly. That's what that's supposed to look like. There we go. So my strat for this chuck, at these uh, two chucks at the end, or three chucks at the end, is I take my hand off the D-pad, and I go alternate Y and X, and I tap it five times. So like right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. <laughs> and I do it on all of them. Uh, because the ice actually maintains your speed there, so you can just use both hands. Makes it a little easier. So those those fireballs are so fast. Yeah, you actually saw you got all five out and the chuck died, but I also died too. It's like sometimes the last fireball you hit won't kill the thing fast enough. Nice. I Let's see if he gets up the hill. So I think it's RNG whether or not you make it up this hill. If you make it up the hill, it's actually a time save. But if you slide down the hill, you lose some time. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that was, that's a time save. It is a very small time save. I don't know. It's like a second. It's like it's like nothing. So this is like one of the flashiest levels in the hack. 
This camera takes a little while to get used to. Uh, it's a little disorienting. It's but once you get used to it, it's really fun. If you hold run and press the trigger button, you throw a block anytime you want. Morsel loves throw blocks. Oh man, he loves them. I guess the official official story now is he is a throw block before he could jump half. Well, he's made <laughs> Morsel boss where at the end you just fill a throw block. <laughs> World Peace is a national treasure. Yeah, very much so. He's actually listed in the cards of this game as, I think, legendary SMW hacker. Well earned. Well deserved. So I think the first half of this level is a little more straightforward than the second half. There's a lot of really particular movement and one cycle is possible in the second half, though one reason this is really fun in a speedrun. Once you learn the, the fast strats, you can make it through this level really quick. I, most of my strats here are kind of slow, but I've been developing. Underrated strat when speedrunning Kaizo. Just don't die. If you do it the slow way and don't die, a lot of times you're going to be faster than, than the top runs. Because uh, Kaizo hacks, especially at this difficulty, aren't super optimized. They're optimized by deaths. So you just got to be really, really good at not dying. Yeah, I, honestly, not dying will save minutes over like a few seconds yeah. going there with faster strats. Exactly. There's a way you can kill that thwomp to make that a lot easier. I missed so the, that... uh, the setup alert, though. The so the strat the to kill the thwomp is the throw block up by the thwimp at the top you have to make sure it gets destroyed. If it gets destroyed, then the Thwomp uh, spawns in the proper uh, sprite slot that you can actually kill it with the block. Yeah, I, I lost my throw block, so I wasn't able to kill it. <laughs> yeah, that happens. This level, for whatever reason, just either goes amazingly well or it doesn't go at all. And this first section why. this first section is very long and if you die at the very end it's just a big time loss and it gets very frustrating. <laughs> uh, so the the gimmick here is this dolphin follows you and uh, Yoshis eat the dolphin, but you cannot interact with the Yoshis, so you have to just dodge them uh, until the end when you actually have to force some eats. You can one cycle that block, but I've never been able to. Yeah, there's a lot of like really small optimizations like that are that are possible in this run, which is what makes it kind of fun. Uh, once you get it, the highest levels, yeah, nice. That's that's really cool. That was a good, yeah, that was a good, good eats. This is another long memory test. Just gotta remember where the saws are. There is no cue. <laughs> you just have to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This part has two rooms. The one he just did. It's one like part just is pure memory fast. But the second half you can anything. react to a little bit. And then there is a fast strat in the last room. Let's see if he goes for it. Oh, I'm gonna go for it. Oh yeah. Just do a little jump and in the door. Nice. You just do, and you learn. Exactly. I am embarrassed to admit how long it took me the first time through to beat that second half. This level is my favorite one in the speedrun because the fast strats in this level are so fun and satisfying. So going under that saw lines you up so you can one cycle every single one of these jumps. And it is so, so fun to watch and really fun to play. Nice. This drop right here is always really scary. Easy. I feel like sometimes you edge up to the edge, but you don't fall off in time. There's a few fast strats in the second half that are a little harder to uh, to execute, so it's a lot safer just to kind of do what you feel comfortable with here. Link Dead has the craziest strat in the second half of this level that I've never been able to replicate. And then yet another boss. This one happens to be broken. So if you drop the block on that wing block that's supposed to fly off screen, you can just stand over here, and there's no danger. It's not super hard anyway, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yes, my split name for this is Nintendessi's Bedroom. <laughs> it 
it's surprisingly hard to actually get that block to stop, though. I'm actually pretty glad that I, uh, I got that the first try. One more auto scroller. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, my strat for this level is stay as far to the right as possible. So this jump off the bomb explosion uh, is consistent. It's you just have to have a really good visual cue for it. Uh, but when you're playing it blind, you don't have that cue. So a lot of times you jump on it and you just don't get the jump, and it's very frustrating. The boss at the end of this level is potentially a really big time loss, too. Uh, if you don't get the one cycle on Lemmy, it is just brutal <laughs> to get the kill sometimes. Yeah, so, so there's a Lemmy fight there. Lemmy will always spawn in the same spots in the same order. But if you don't, as they're all set, do on your first try, the later patterns are really unpredictable. Most of the, this level is just finding good visual cues. Once you find good visual cues, then you can just kind of run through it. Yeah, losing speedruns at Lemmy is painful because you didn't even get to the get to RNG Castle to lose it there. That is the only place that you're allowed to lose speedruns to Storks is in RNG Castle or uh, Motor Skills. <laughs> no, I'm gonna add sticky keys. keys. Okay, sticky yeah, keys, fine. Sticky yeah, keys. or sticky keys. Dying to, I'm really just anywhere. Dying to right. is awful. Alright, let's see how Lemmy goes. Bullets are kinda off. <laughs> let's go Dark Nine, nice. Easy. Easy. No, the bullets are kinda off, but I saw I saw one. <laughs> That can easily lose you like two to five minutes if you get into some bad patterns. I, I almost always lose exactly a minute and a half if I die. Okay, so there, before, before I continue, um, I am donating $10 for each unique room we see in here. So hopefully only 40. So the optimal rooms are this slope room that he's currently in. Uh, then I want to say the Yoshi room is the fastest second room. The third fastest room is the ice room, and then ropes Resnor, I think, is actually the fastest Resnor. Uh, but you don't get to choose what rooms you're in. Uh, the castle chooses for you, and it never chooses the rooms that you want, ever. Pretty good so far. Yeah, this is like always a really cool level, because it has 16 different rooms, and they all throw back to the 16 previous levels. Yeah, so the so way like this... A nice tap on the hack. The way this works is that there's four rooms that I have to complete in, in a row, randomly chosen. Uh, and it goes like levels one through four, levels five through so on so forth. And he got ice, that's fast. That's good. That, that was pretty good RNG. Yeah, and, like, and so you can't press down at any point really this room. All these pipes kill you if you go into them. So the room three is on the blind playthrough. Most people only ever beat the Chuck room. Uh, because they're really, really hard to learn because you have to play through the first two rooms every single time you want to learn them. Oh, all right. This is, usually this is a good Resnor to get. Nice. All right. The one shot. And now the best boss in the game. This is Boo Boss. It is a 15 hit Boo Boss where you are bouncing on a shell that turns into a disco shell that turns into raining thumps and then back into a disco shell. <laughs> it's such a fun boss to, to play and so cool to watch. This is my favorite boss in all of SMW packs so far that I've played. This was my favorite boss and it finally was dethroned by Casio Mario World. Oh, you went for the pause strat, that's sick. <laughs> so if you pause when the clouds are going up, the disco shell just phases through them and it is no longer dangerous. It's actually harder for me to do with the pause strat, which is why I took a hit there. Uh, the disco shell provides a visual cue for me, which I no longer have. I was going to say, I never go for it because I feel better with the disco shell up there with me because <laughs> I can manage it. Nice. I So I wasn't going to go for it, but... I didn't know about it until Cascade told me about it. 
It's pretty swaggy. And so one, so one, once you throw that block over there, you can't spawn another one until it poofs. So now that it poofs, you can spawn another one. You can get the hit. Yeah, cool strat. Just for swag. I don't think I can go for the free hit either. Nah, I think he's off cycle. So uh, you can actually leave a block at the top of the screen on the clouds and get a free hit if you have it on the right cycle. Well, that was unfortunate. <laughs> oh, if you kill the shell, you gotta start over. You need that shell. That's fine. I'm not gonna go for the, uh, the boss strat again. No, and now you can go for the free hit. We're just showing off all the different things you can do fight because it's a uh... it's a cool fight it's a really cool fight there's actually one faster cycle that you can get uh which allows you if you keep your mushroom to damage boost off the spikes and jump and kill boo uh quickly which speeds up the animation and gets you to the next room faster too again all kinds of cool little optimizations that you can do in this run if you're confident <laughs> you just got to be confident See, like this is already going way better because I can, yeah, I can see where the disco shell is, and that indicates where I need to jump and what I need to do. I'm glad that you phased it through. That's always fun to watch. <laughs> I, I wanted to do it once. So being big really only affects one jump in this level, I would say, and it's the jump after this phase where the clouds are going up because it makes it a lot harder to make the jump down and land on the shell. Uh, Otherwise, the mushroom is is there just for kind of safety. I also can't go for the. Uh... Thing. But that's okay. I don't need to. I press down. No. <laughs> you hate to see it. I hate to see that. <laughs> it's okay. I just wanted to listen to this music a little bit more. Yeah, so this fight actually used to have different music in the really early versions of the game. It had the uh, Kirby's Adventure Nightmare song, I believe, which is also at the end of Hyper 6. Good lord. Imagine listening to that for like hours on end when you fight Morsel is the number one Hyper 6 enthusiast, I would say. Maybe dethroned by Link Dead. Yeah, Link Maybe. Did organize a whole relay. <laughs> That's one thing that makes his design style so unique, though, is he's really inspired by non-Kaizo hacks, and a lot of Kaizo players just aren't super familiar with non-Kaizo hacks, so we get a nice window in some of, into some of the unethical stuff that you guys get to experience. Yeah, yeah, the two, the two things he wants to inspiration for this hat are Luigi's Adventure, which is early 2000s Act 8 in the city, and the Hyper Series by Haimari, both of which are not Kaito at all. It's still extremely difficult. Hey, probably. Nice, nice. So that's the free hit. Thing else you always have to like watch out for on this fight is you don't want the disco shell to ever hit the walls and it bounces really erratically. So one thing to think about with this fight too that uh, you don't get to see as a viewer, these thwomps are on a global timer. Uh, so when they spawn is essentially RNG. Uh, so sometimes you get really late thwomp spawns and you have to deal with the disco shell on the clouds while you're waiting for the thwomps to spawn and it can be very frustrating. <laughs> One last hit. No faster. Nice. <laughs> I didn't That's count. fine. No, go safe. <laughs> Just get out of there. GG. If you bounce up onto one of the platforms there, you can save a couple seconds, but you can also kill yourself. So. Yeah, there, there's a fast strat and then the even faster strat, which I've never been able to do because I can never get the first hit in time. And now we play motor skills forever. Yeah. Or hopefully for like four minutes. So this was a KLDC level that uh, Morsel inserted into the hack. This is the origins of motor skills, as far as I know, or at least in Kaizo. Uh, yeah, so I believe the first instance was 
can jump. The yeah. Jump, normally normal jump to a spin jump in midair. This is the first time you can go in both directions. Uh, and this even improved on that patch because now I believe this is the first time that you could actually hold an item and switch your spin or switch your jump in midair. No, a nice skip on the thwomp. I never do that. That's really scary. Okay. Yeah, that scared me too. <laughs> oh, it's super consistent. All the scary things in this game are super consistent. All right, so the really hard rooms start at room three. I think room three is my favorite room. And then in KLDC tradition, there is a fourth awful room. <laughs> room three. Al weird. Always one too many rooms. That I want to say that first jump there off of that shell is way harder than it looks. It is. Uh, you have to really, you have to really cut your jump. Like you have to hit it really far to the right, otherwise you don't get what? that distance. Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Possibly a wall clip. That's another thing. This game does not have wall clips patched. Uh, he could have. He just didn't. Fortunately, though, this is the one level you can actually save it after a wall clip. Yeah, wall clips you can act, you can save. You get it in time in this level. This is one of the most fun levels in the hack, but also one of the most frustrating because you play those first three rooms and they're great, and then you get to this room and it is just so tough. <laughs> this is such a tough room. Particularly because of that. Yep, so that up throw right there is very rough. You have to set it up in a very specific way for it to spawn right, for you to throw it upright, for it to hit the block. It's just, it's just really hard. Yeah, this room's hard for everybody. It's hard because sometimes you'll switch over to uh, to spin jump and then crush the uh, the Koopa down there. I've been running this hack for a long time and I have still not one shot motor skills. That's that's. Oh, game. I don't think I've ever done that either. Yeah, I have never one shot motor skills. This is, I think, the only level in the hack that I have not one shot. Maybe someday. It's really hard too, because you get to the first four rooms, you don't have these sequence of boot fights. And the first boot fight is like a really hard jump at the beginning. Which you don't lose a lot of time for, but it's hard just not to die there at all. Yeah, and it spawns you in the room really quickly, so you just have to yeah. react right away. Alright, we're doing the chase. Going for deathless, like that kind of makes it really tough. So there's actually cheese here. If you lose that block, uh, you can just kind of hesitate there and get an easy big jump over. Nice. And then boost. <laughs> I just love these coins. Nice. Boost. Yeah, so this first jump is definitely the hardest jump in the boss. Uh, after this, it's just all focus. Even if you get that jump, sometimes when you spin on that block, like, you'll just miss it. And it's like kind of the same as a two top tile shell, got shell bucket. Sometimes you don't land on the block. Yeah, you can miss that block, which is super frustrating. Frustrating. I hate that. That third room is tough too. There's a really specific sequence of jumps that allows you to line up and actually hit the boo. It's it's really easy to miss him by being too late and by being too early. That's more so there's no indication of where that blue switch is. Yep, you just gotta search every single turn block. <laughs> And then one last thing, you think you're done, you have no control of Mario, but you do have to hit the spin button right at the end, or you fall through and have to do it all over again. And that's time. GG, Dark Nine. Good yeah, run. Awesome run. Yeah, really good run. Super happy with that run. That went great. Uh, obviously, this, this hack means a lot to me, so it's really fun to watch someone get to do it at a marathon, finally. Yeah, so... I just want to thank uh, 
the third wall and Bolop for doing the commentary. It is a huge privilege to have you on the uh, on the stage talking about what I'm doing. Um, but especially big thanks to both Eldad and Third Wall. Uh, watching Eldad run this game at what was it uh, MMC? That was when I first decided I have to run through. I have to play this game. And then as I was playing through my first playthrough, I said I will not run this game. It is you know it's too hard. I don't want to learn this. And then <laughs> at, at GDQ, as GDQ last year, Third Wall taught me how to run the game, and from there, well, this is where we are now. So uh, big shout outs to everyone. Yeah, without Link Dead, I would have never played this game either. So thank you, Link Dead. Uh, also, screw you, Link Dead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks to Dark Nine for having us. Thanks for the awesome run. Thanks, Morsel, for the awesome game. Yeah, thank you, Morsel, for creating my favorite ROM hack. Uh, I don't know. I, this is probably the last time that I'm going to push any sort of PB, but, well, <laughs> Third Wall and I have said that how many times now, collectively? You're going to come back. I, I'm going to come <laughs> back. You can't escape. Hey, thanks so much, guys. That was a fantastic run. Thank you. Uh, anything else uh, anyone needs to say before we start getting ready for the next one? Any last shout outs or anything like that? Shout outs to Direct Relief, uh, providing medical medicine. Uh, please, 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 please get those donations in if you can. 